And we're live. We're live. Hello, everybody. I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, it's Adam and Josh back again for another streaming mm -hmm. uh, stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, since we've been making games, you know, um, using Python, JavaScript, uh, we decided that, you know what, why don't we use it on an actual game engine? And that's Unity. So right now, it's not going to be anything too complex or anything. It's just, um, you know, just going over the basics of Unity, right? Just uh, basically giving you little that little push to like say, hey, look, these are the basics of Unity. You know, go ahead and do what you want with it, kind of thing. So let's start with the new project. Uh, before we begin, uh, if oh, you guys yeah. can hear us, can you guys uh, go ahead and uh, say in chat? This looks like there's a some sort of a problem problem with the audio. It, it shouldn't be anything big okay it, it says it says that the, the audio bit rate is currently zero but it. it seems to be streaming correctly so i don't know what's going on well we're gonna be making a 2d game hopefully they can hear me <laughs> we'll be making yeah, a 2d hopefully. game uh, i don't know what should what should i call it uh, uh, um, the, the stream game stream game Let's go with that. Okay, let's create it. Let Unity do its thing. All right. Okay. Also, do you guys like my background? Look at it. <laughs> can, can I move this? Can I not move no, this? Is, is this so. one of those screens <laughs> that you can't move? Here, let me just do this. Does it look nice? Look at that. I, I like Tron. You know, that's my thing. That's why I have a Tron wallpaper. But that's just me. <laughs> okay, any day now. There we go. All right. So now Unity, Unity is up. You can see that there's a bunch of stuff going on here. So let me go through each and every single um, tab that's open. So the hierarchy is basically... Uh, what you're going to be doing a lot. This is where you put all your game objects, your sprites, your 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 background, your your I don't know music probably. Yeah, it's special effects. Basically, anything that you're going to put in the game is basically going to go into this hierarchy, right? Uh, yeah. By the way, you can also move them if if it's bothering you. Uh, mm -hmm. So the scene is basically where you craft your level. We're going to make a 2D level for this uh, for the stream. Um, because 3D is a little bit more complex, so we decided to go with something a little bit, you know, not too hard, and that is 2D, right? So, uh, let's get started. Uh, let's make a... Oh, wait, no. <laughs> I can go through each tab. The project tab. Uh, basically, you go through every single thing. here. You put every single sprite, and also tiles, if you want to do a tile map here, which I'll talk about later. Uh, your scripts as well. They all go into this project folder. Yes. Um, uh, TT says Pog. Pog. You already know Poggers. You already know TT. Uh, uh, console. Basically, you can have like there will be the errors here. Uh, you can have like let's say you want to test something out, but you don't know if the method is going through. You could put like a console log here um, on the console. And last but not least, the inspector, which basically uh, describes all of the elements that are on each. Um, game object so for example if i click main camera we can see that the main camera has a position which is the transform uh and then the camera settings that it has um yeah that's basically it oh well last but not least the game the actual game itself how it looks like but uh that's it so let's get started yeah. okay uh, shout out to uh kaylin who says uh hello hello kaylin how have you been hopefully you've been good hopefully everybody's been good uh, let's make a folder. I like to be neat, so I'm gonna have a separate folder for scripts. I'm gonna create a folder for the sprites. Do I need? Oh, I know. For those of you who don't know, sprites are like uh, you know your, your graphics, your players, your images, and things of that sort. Yeah, my bad. I didn't see. <laughs> very, very similar to Scratch. For those of you who want Scratch, this is like better Scratch right here. You had to say that word. 
<laughs> All right, so we'll make a sprite. This one's going to be a player, right? And then we'll make another sprite, uh, and it's going to be the ground. Let's call it ground, yeah. even though it's the same thing. You know what? Let's make the player. Let's make the player a circle. I like it having it a circle. Let's delete it real quick. Yes, I want to delete yeah. it. Let's make him a circle. Uh, uh, also, uh, Josh and I are not artists, and so uh, obviously we're you going know. to be using simple, solid color players and backgrounds and stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, you guys can implement your own art in here. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of sprite drawing programs that are free. That you can like make your own animations and stuff, uh, but yeah, for us right now, we're just gonna we're not good artists, we're not good animators, so we're just gonna put out you know with the with the stuff that we have here. Yes. So okay. let's create a two D object. By the way, the mm -hmm. way I got this menu is right clicking here in the empty space, and basically we're gonna make a sprite, right? <laughs> and we're gonna call this sprite. We're gonna make it the ground ground right so the sprite renderer here it allows you to have the ground um become a sprite like what sprite uh, model do you want let's say i had like a really cool detailed like brick or grass block i can render it by clicking this little circle here and then all of my sprites will be here so let's just go with you know ground because what color do you want it adam We'll uh, green, green, green grass. Green grass. Okay, we're make we're gonna make it like this. Oh, that's not a bad shade of green. That really isn't. Uh, all right, let's put it to scale. Scale main mainly is used to like you know make it bigger or smaller. Um, I'm gonna make it twenty. And I'm gonna make. Should I make it one? I'll leave it at one. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now that we have that, we have the ground, let's make the player. So we'll go sprite, sprite renderer, we'll make it player right here. Uh, should it, the sprite be white or the player be white or what, what color? Uh, uh, yeah, let's go with white okay. right now. Okay, so now that we have the player and we have the ground, <laughs> Let's see what happens when we run the game. It just stays there. All right, cool. We got our first. You know, what? that looks like a baseball and a field. I don't know. That's just me. That looks like a baseball. I, I was thinking golf ball. But... You're thinking golf ball. Okay, that that's. Yeah, I was thinking baseball for some reason. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so basically, now what we're gonna do? We're gonna apply physics to the world. Um, mainly on the, on the player. So I, I didn't even call it player. Okay. Now, an important term that you need to know when you're creating a game is rigid body. See, the first time that I was playing with Unity, I didn't apply this. And for the longest time, I didn't know how to apply physics to a sprite or a, an object. And it all derives between this rigid body. So if we press play right now, you see it falls through. <laughs> First of all, there's no collider between anything. There's nothing that's colliding between them. But this is what allows the physics of, oh, yeah, there's gravity. You have a mass. Uh, there's a... Uh... Oh, you can see it right here. I just realized. Yeah, <laughs> drag. I know that. yeah there's the linear drag, angular drag, um, collision detection, depth. and other things. Even rotation and position. So rigid body is basically the physics of the world, right? So, of course, obviously, if you want to have it land on the ground, we need to have a collider on both things. So to do that is really simple. We go, we're going to go to the ground, and we're going to add a component. Uh, this add component allows you to put whatever you want. So we can go and we can put um, box collider, because it's basically a box. And it should automatically, you see this outline of the green here, should automatically have the collider settings to its max. But if you want, you can always edit it to however, you know, much you want it to collide. That's a pretty big collision right there. Uh, <laughs> but we'll just keep it normal right there. Uh, also, let's see, 
The player, yeah, the player who want to be a box collider, it would be uh, what is it called circle collider? Yeah, circle collider. I'm gonna add that to the player, and for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Wow, I could barely see in this thing. And you guys will know why in a bit. I'll just make it so that it's barely enough. I'll put it right there. Okay. <clears throat> I'll t I'll show you guys why I'm doing this right now. But for now, just just you know, just know that I have the circle collider. It's a little bit smaller than the actual circle. So now, when we run the game, we can see that. Look, the, it, falls it, it, it falls on the on the thing on the grass. I guess <laughs> we'll call it grass. Whoa. Right. So also just really cool thing you know i i think it's pretty cool you can make the illusion that it's like on the grass itself rather than being on top of it just like this so that look watch the has it losing whoa dude oh, I, oh toss, toss a shadow on there and phew. yeah toss a shadow there and then you have like a cool 2d thing i don't know i just thought that was cool see we could be artists too right like yeah. Got this. Oh, yeah definitely um so why don't, why don't we leave that there? Why don't we leave it? You like want to leave it there? Okay, we can yeah. leave it there. That's not that's not a problem. Okay, so we got that down. We got the physics. We explained what's going on here, the collision and all that. Now let's talk about scripts. That's what we're here for, right? I know I am. So let's create a C sharp script. Yes, by the way, I did not explain that. Unity is C sharp based, so it's basically an OOP language that's built in to Unity. So that's how we're going to be working it with today. So let's make this script. It's going to be player movement. And also I'm going to be using Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio, <laughs> not code, uh, Visual Studio, uh, making the code. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let's open up the script. And here we have C Sharp. It's been a while. Uh, so as you can see here, it's using the Unity engine. That's the syntax, basically, of Unity that we're using. Uh, so we have a public class. It's player movement. Adam, you could probably explain this a little bit better than me. Uh, but this is basically extending from mono behavior, correct? Yes, yes. It's extending. Yeah, it's from extending. Behavior. All you, you have to know that? is that the, like the, we're making a class called player movement, which is like a script for our player and it contains all of the player functions that we have. And the extends model behavior is just means that it's a normal thing that has normal behavior, essentially. It's it's not really too important to understand how the extension works. It's just that like it extends they all from require, model behavior. Yeah. Yeah, they all require that, that little piece of code right there. Yes. Okay. But, cause so, there's other behavior types, but like that's the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. base one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check for movement. Um, and you can see here that there's two methods already given to us. So basically, these methods are built-in methods to the Unity syntax. Void start um, is a is what's called once the game actually begins. Like the moment the game begins, I want you to do something. Other than that, it's not it will not be called again. And then mm -hmm. void update, what's really interesting about update is that it's called once per frame. So every frame that happens in the game, this method is going to be called, right? And we want the movement to be under this method, right? Because we want to check in each frame, A, hey, am I going left? Am I going right? Where am I going? So this is where we're going to do our method or our, our script, basically. So let's just go ahead and call vector 3. Uh, it's, it's worth noting that the start and update functions are very similar to how last... Saturday, we looked at the setup and draw functions in our uh, p5.js thing. It's the same thing, right? The start function runs once the beginning, and then the update one runs every single frame. Yes, correct. Uh, did I put this right? I feel like I didn't put it right. Uh, Can I convert from boom to float? Oh, 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 oh. I definitely did something wrong here, and I completely forgot. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> what is it? So we have the movement here, right? And then for the movement, we made it this. Okay. So <laughs> sorry, okay. you're gonna have to bear with me for a second here. 
I'm trying to remember how I did this because. Oh, then I, you used the uh, horizontal input that uh, can access horizontal. Input that can access horizontal. Wait, what do you mean? Like oh, vector right, because the movement. vector, yeah, that vector it allows us to get the the movement itself, Hello. right? So yeah, you're right. I have to get movement itself. So, so, so what I we're doing to... is, we're, yeah, we're making Sorry. the left and right movements, uh, right, right here, and we're going to use uh, input dot. Wait, I'm sorry. I don't need to do this, actually. Yeah, you can just feed it. Where it says input dot get key jump, you can just do input dot get access horizontal. Get access horizontal, yeah. Yeah. Access. So what get access horizontal does is that it gets why, the, uh, the horizontal momentum of the of the player. So if you push D, it'll give you like a positive one or something. And if you push A, uh, it'll give you a negative one. Yes. Since so if your arrow keys are, you push right, you get a positive one. You push left, you get a negative one. Like that. Correct. So we're making a movement vector right here. It yeah. says, okay. I don't know why I put jump. That was weird. Let's pretend we didn't <laughs> see that. That was weirdly weird. weird. Okay. So, yeah. yes, just like Adam explained, that's what we're doing. You're just getting the axis of which direction we're going. So now what we're going to do, remember what I mentioned earlier about the player itself, how this transform uh, enables us to move this position around using the X and then the Y axis. So we're going to use it similarly here in the script. We're basically going to say, okay, I'm in the game object, whichever game object that I'm on, I want to use the transform and I want it to change its position. Transform dot position, very simple. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to aggregate it to well, whatever we have for movement. So we can just put movement. And then here's the cool part about um, Unity. When you're playing a game, there's certain frames that, that you can run through a game, right? There's 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, you know, when you cap it. So the thing about these frames is that if you don't multiply it by the time that you have relative to your frames, then if you had slower fr or lower frames than others, your movement will be sluggish compared to those that have 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. So what we want is to have the time be uh, relative to your uh, frames per second. And the way we mm -hmm. do that is by multiplying it by time that delta time. Just like that. And last but not least, we should put a move speed, right? Let's actually call, make that a public yeah. variable. Public float move speed. What do, what do we want it? Five? Five? Yeah, let's go five. Let's go five. And then multiply that by move speed. Just like that. Now, I don't believe I'm missing anything else. So now, let's go back to Unity. And then let's actually add the script to the player uh, by going so here, player movement, right here. Yes, yeah, so we're making, adding a new component, and we're just tossing the player movement script in there. Yes, now let's run it. Let's see. Hey, there we oh. go, we're moving. Look at that. Look at that, I'm pressing the A and D key, as well as the left and right key on the on the arrows on the arrow keys there you go we're moving our, our little ball is moving now the curious thing about it is that because it's a shape right we don't see that it's we think that it's in a fixated state but it's actually the ball rolling the ball is actually rolling actually can i wait is it rolling mm -hmm. how can i show the maybe if you go to the sprite renderer and then you can sprite like that renderer. I think we would change it to like a gradient or something. I don't know if you, I don't know. Can you do uh, that? I have no idea if you could do that. I don't think you can. But yeah, it actually is rotating. So what we do here, or is it? I honestly can't tell anymore. I don't think it is. Because like the, the rotation doesn't change. Huh, that is insane. You're right. The rotation doesn't change. For me, when I was doing this earlier, the cube was, or the square was rotating for me. Uh, that's just weird, but okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, sure. That's remember? True. Yeah. So, interesting. So, now that we have that, we have the, um, we have the whole 
movement going on. Now let's worry about the jump. Now the jump is very simple as well. It's not as, let me make a separate method for it actually. Let me do void jump. And yeah, you could create your own methods here. It's not constrained to use it all into update. You could of course always use OOP here, make a different class if you want to. Um, so basically what happens here is that what we're gonna make it we're gonna make the player do is we're gonna make it jump when it presses a specific key. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do um, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do if an if statement if uh, then we get input dot get key down and then here we put jump. I don't know why before I put jump. I don't understand why. Let's forget that happened, right? <laughs> Then we do that. If input dot get key down, right? And then you're uh -huh. jumping. Basically, what we want now is we want to create a force, basically, on the object, right? In order to make that force, we need to apply the physics to it. So in order to apply the physics to that object, we need to use its rigid body. So let's go back to the script. So basically, we're going to do game object whatever game object that we're on dot get component all get component does is that it says okay out of all of these I want to get a specific component of the game object so in this case I want the rigid body so we put it here rigid body 2d just like mm -hmm. that and then we're gonna say I want to add a force just like that and now we can see that there, in this method, there are two overloads or two methods. One that would be just the force itself, and then the other would be the force of where you want it, and then what kind of force you want. So here we would want a force on the y-axis, right? Because it's vertical. So we're going to add a new vector. New vector 2, because it's just going to be x and y. Uh, we're going to put 0f on the first one because that's x and then float y should i put 5f or should i put a global variable for let's put a global variable for it let's make it public float uh jump jump speed is, is that right uh jump yeah, power? yeah jump, speed. jump power i think jump, jump power is a little bit up. better yeah right, let's do that okay let's do jump power 5f and then the kind of force we want so we can do oh what did i put force mode 2d and then dot, we want to force our impulse. So force, what it does, even says it right here, add a force to the rigid body 2D based on its mass. So if we had the mass bigger, it would jump less. And then an impulse is just, um, you know, a, a straight up, a bigger force added to that object uh, rather than just the force itself. So do impulse, just like that. Yeah, uh, for those guys who are wondering, these, these are like, the impulse enforcing your actual like real physics terms that you would you're supposed to learn in your physics class if you have a you know, good, good physics teacher. Oh, let's 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 not go there, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy, I have to tell you something about that after after the stream. All uh, right. So, uh, yeah, we have that down. So the jump is should be good. Let's go check our actual game itself. Um, according to all right, I'm gonna press space in three, two. One. Nothing happened. Nothing uh, happened. Oh. <laughs> I, didn't call it. I know why. I know why. I know why. So we forgot to include the jump method in our oh, update thing. Wow. My good. Oh, semicolon. Uh, I knew that. I knew that, guys. I'm sorry. I knew that. I was just making sure. I was making sure you guys knew. I was making sure you guys knew. Jump is unknown. Whoa, we got an area <laughs> here. Hold up. Where's the area here? Jump is unknown. Oh, do we have to... No. Is that right? Input that get key down jump. Right? This should be it because basically what we're doing here is we're getting the actual input of the jump itself. So... Oh, get, it's get button down. Is it get button down? Yes. Get button down? Not get key down? I think get key down for like a specific key like space. What is this? It returns true during the frame the user starts to press the key and then by the press key code, you, you're right. 
You're absolutely right. Okay, get button down. This is, yeah, virtual button. Oh, the, yeah. So this is that. My bad, guys. I got confused. Okay, we should be good now. Let's save. Let's clear it real quick. There we go. No complaints. Now let's press play. Okay. <laughs> well, let's try this again. Three, two, one. <laughs> and there we go. We have a jump on our player. Just like that. This is really cool. I like it. But see, there's a problem. Adam, do you want to explain the problem to him? Oh, the problem is that you can play Flappy Bird. Uh, and you can fly away. Look at that. The, the golf ball is flying. The golf ball is flying. I'm sure there's a golf ball game. I remember there was a golf ball game just like this on the mobile. I forgot what it was called. <laughs> I promise you there was one. But yeah, oh, basically my. that's the problem. <laughs> you can basically jump infinitely and then just you know and then it's just gonna fall down eventually but wow it's still going wow um but yeah that's that's the problem we have now and basically the way to fix this is really simple oh it, my oh. wow that it, i it, think it had a little too much force it went straight the through the ground where, yeah i think the collision wasn't even detected there <laughs> okay so <laughs> In order to fix this... Oh, no, Josh! <laughs> We're being called cheaters again! Oh, boy. This again. Oh, every <laughs> time! <laughs> okay, so remember this little space that I didn't create. So here, we're going to have a little checker. We're going to call it ground checker. And then basically, we're going to make it a part of player. Now, one thing I had to explain first before we go on... There are such things as parent objects and child objects. Adam, do you want to explain it to them, or do you want me to? Yeah, I can. I, I think I can explain it. Sure. Go for it. Go. Basic, for it. Uh, basically, like as you can see, our like a little hierarchy on the on the left right here. We can have objects that are like child children of other objects, which basically like imagine you have a uh, a player like you do know. Do you want me to open a paint to? Oh no no no! Wait, no, no. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, okay. Just like imagine you have a player and. Like a child object that could be their their sword or something, right? Or their their hat or whatever you. <laughs> their you know, sword or hat. Wow, this is too different. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. creative. But like, essentially, the that sword has its own properties. It has its its own like you know values and stuff, and it's so it's contained in the sword object. But the sword object is part of the parent object, which makes it really easy for them to like, move together, right? Because you don't want the player to run off about their sword and sword to run off about the player. Right. That, that'd be weird. Yeah, that would be weird. You know, it'd be two separate <laughs> game objects there that basically, you know, it wouldn't make sense. So, yeah, just like Adam was saying, basically you want it to be attached to that player, right? So that's why we have the player be the parent object, which should be the whole constructor, right, of the actual player. And then the other, you know, accessories that he has, like a necklace or something or... I don't know why I said necklace. I don't know why I said necklace, but it's the first thing that came to mind. Um, a sword or, or pants even, maybe. You know, you want those to be under the child as the player. So we're going to, I believe we're going to right click here. We're going to make a 2D object. No, an empty object. Sorry about that. Not a sprite. Uh, we're going to call this uh, ground check. Okay, let's move it down here. And we're going to give it a collision. A uh, box collision should be fine, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it should be fine. We're adding a very, very, very small box collider thing to the bottom. Very small. Uh, Super small. Like, Super teeny, duper. weeny, weeny, uh, tiny, Super tiny, tiny, tiny. Duper. Duper. Small. Is that fine? Yeah. I think we can make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Just a little bit bigger. On both ends. Maybe there. And then there. How does that look? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty decent. Okay. So, for this ground checker... Whoa. Voice crack. Sorry about that. <laughs> for this <laughs> the ground checker, we're going to have its own separate script. So... Let's go ahead and create that script. C shirt script. We're gonna call it um what should I call it? Uh, ground Ground Checker. Ground check. 
Let's put ground check. All right, let's open that up. There we go. Okay, so for this one, it's going to be... We're not going to use the update because we are going to use uh, methods that are already predetermined in Unity. Uh, and it's going to be called uh, on collision enter 2D. And you can see it automatically provides a, uh, a method for you. So on collision enter 2D is a method that basically what happens is once this object, whichever one I reference to, once it enters a collision with another object, I want you to do something. And then basically we're going to say if it touches the ground, then we're going to say that, oh, the player is allowed to jump kind of thing, right? Uh -huh. So uh, let's actually create a variable here. Um, let's create a Boolean. Let's go public Boolean. Uh, uh, is ground? Is grounded? Yeah, is ground on ground? Uh, grounded. Is ground. Is ground? Is ground. Let's put is grounded. Yeah. And then we'll make it false because it starts out in the air. So let's just go with false. Um, so now that's there. So now what we can do is basically for this on collision enter, we're going to have an if statement. So if collision dot collider, by the way, this is referencing this collision here, dot collider dot tag here's the reason why I'm going to put tag equals and then we'll call it ground so there is a reason why I'm only calling the tag and not the name itself is because unity does something really cool basically this ground here you can see that there's a tag and then there's a layer so the tag is mainly used for something specific uh, for the object like for example since this is a ground we could just put a tag here and then we, oh my goodness, voice crack. <laughs> and then we can put a new tag, we're gonna call it ground. And we save that, go back to ground, and then check that. And then later what that is used for is for more objects that are gonna be common in your game. Like for example, you could put enemies, or you can put um, maybe coins. Let's say you're making yeah. like a Mario or Sonic, right? You know, there's going to be like coins, little objects that you can collect. Uh, those those would be in that layer as well. That would take a different effect. Maybe once you touch them, once you collide with them in that layer, then they disappear, right? So that's basically what tag and, and layer is for. So for now, we're just going to use tag. And if the tag is ground, then I want you to do something. And here's the cool thing about this. Since we talked about... Um, the the parent objects of things and we realize that this now this ground checker is a child of player then we could do this we can say uh, on the start we can call an object called game object and uh, what do you want to call it player to reference uh it? sure sure yeah uh, let's yeah. reference it okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say well i want player to equal the transform of the parent of the game object. What does that mean? All I'm saying here is that, okay, so whichever object I'm in, I want to get the position or basically the transform, basically the elements of whichever object is the parent to said um, object. And I want to be able to access all of its elements. Did I repeat myself? I feel like I repeated myself. Uh, <laughs> you, okay. should, you should take a look at the, the, the chat. Uh, we have someone who is telling me to watch more anime. Uh, I am a nerd, and TT is asking who they are. And I know exactly who they are. What's going on here? This is a lively chat here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, What's going is, on this here? Is very, this is very interesting. <laughs> who is this who's calling you a nerd? This is my cousin. Oh. Hello, Adam's cousin. <laughs> anyway, jeez, uh, I didn't know it was so lively in the chat. I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> aware of this. Um, but let me explain that one more time. The ground checker is the child of player. All I'm saying in this one statement here is, okay, I want you to reference the parent 
of this game object and I want you to access all of its elements here. That's all this line is doing. It's just getting the parent and it's getting all the game objects elements here. And it's putting it into this local game object that we've done here. So basically now that we got that out of the way, hopefully I explained that very well. Um, I tried my best. If you guys have concerns, let, know, let Adam know in the chat and I'll see if I, I can explain it even lower. Uh, okay. we're going to do player dot get components and then it would be the player move, right? Player movement. Is that what I called it? I don't even remember. That's what I called it. To be honest with you. Uh, is that what I call it? Yeah. Player movement. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. Player movement. And then we're going to change is grounded because is grounded is a public variable. I'm going to change it to true. And then there's going to be another on collision exit. Where is it? There it is. On collision exit, which is another method. Uh, we're going to say if the collision the collider dot tag equals ground, right? Basically, we're basically going to copy this. Let's just copy and paste here. Once you exit this uh, collider, then I want you to make is grounded false. So now that we have these constraints here, I'm going to go to my player movement and I'm going to put a constraint here. I'm going to say if input dot get button jump down is true and how do you do the operand in C? Oh, it's double, right? And then double amp, yeah. Yeah, double and amster, and amster, what are they called? Amster, a, a, ampersand? Amp, oh, that's how you say it. Amperc ampersand? Yeah, ampersand, right? Ampersand, ampersand. I think. Ampersand. Oh, that's weird to say. Ampersand. Okay. Then we add double ampersands to say and have a and is grounded is true. Then I want you to jump. This should hopefully not have any errors. <laughs> and now let's go check. Let's save. Any errors? Okay. None so far. That's a good sign. Always a good sign. Okay. Let's play. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I can move. All right. Now the <laughs> ultimate test. Three, Here we go. Two, one. <laughs> no. Oh. All right. What's happening here? What's going on? Uh, okay. So we have the is grounded equals false. So if input that get button down jump and is grounded, then I want you to jump. So obviously there's something happening here. Uh, I did add the tag ground to it right i believe so. yeah i did uh when you push play can you take a look at the uh, player in the inspector it's not checking is grounded oh no it's not isn't it it is not checking if it's grounded okay this is interesting it's not checking if it's grounded so basically Wait, I think I know why. I think I know why. Adam, do you know why? Uh, maybe. Do you know why? <laughs> yes, I do know why. Why? I know exactly why. I didn't add the script. <laughs> I see. Earlier, I was like, you know, it, that, that, I should probably like it later. <laughs> and then I kind of forgot to remind you. <laughs> But the, the oh thing is, my god. Um, for those of y'all watching, uh, we didn't actually link the script to the game. So it, it doesn't actually know to check for the, the, to see if it's colliding with the ground or not. <laughs> okay, now if we see player there, we can see that it's grounded itself. Okay, now let's try jumping. Three, <laughs> two, one. There we go. We got to jump. Now let's see if we could spam jump. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm. Yeah, we can hear it. Oh, okay. I'm frantically tapping the space bar, and it, he only jumps once. Uh, <laughs> okay. So now that we have that, do you should I add more platforms to see like a little platformer kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's add some platforms. More ground, or maybe a rock. Make a rock. Like they could jump. Like you have grass, and they could jump on the rock. They could jump on the rock. 
I'm not an artist, Adam. <laughs> it, it could just be a gray, a gray square. <laughs> a gray square. Let's make it a square and let's call a it a rectangle. A gray, yeah. Make it gray. Is that gray? That's there. You go. That's gray. Let's make this. Uh. <laughs> uh. We gotta move it down on the ground. Right? Oh, okay. No, that's, that's that's, that's a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we'll put it right there, right, right, right there, and then we'll make. The collision, Bucks Collider 2D, and then, okay, let's see. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing, but I'll try it anyway. Oh, it has to be down on the ground more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I absolutely forgot we, we did this thing. So, there's going to be a problem here once I jump on top of this rock. I jump on top of the rock. But I can't jump. Do you guys know what? Do you want to tell them why, Adam? Uh, it's because uh, if y'all remember that uh, collision detector thing we had to detect if the ground is there, it kind of rolled off to the side a little bit whenever we jumped. Um, so now it's not detecting if it's on touching the ground or not. like the the collision detector, like either like somewhere up, somewhere else. Oh, now it looks like it flipped back. Nope, never mind. No, see, it's taking a while for it to, like, you know, actually jump there. Because, remember, we put it at a specific place in the circle, and since it's rotating, you know, it's going to... Oh. Okay, something else is happening then. It's not rotating? I find that hard to believe. I think what's happening what? here is that the reason I can't jump on the rock originally was because I didn't put the tag of ground here. That was the first thing, but I thought that... If I didn't rotate, if I didn't stop the rotation here in, where, where, where is it, in rigid body, in the constraints and the freeze rotation, I thought that it would not be able to go through, but it does. Interesting. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to be curious, guys, I'm not going to lie. I want to add another player in, just really quick. Um, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it a square. I'm just curious. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, let's make this uh, test, I guess. Let's call him test. Uh, let's give him box collider. I have box collider and stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. stuff. And then we put... Um, whoop, yeah, the same thing, the jump. Uh, let's edit this real quick. Let's just make the player square real quick. I'll put that there. Right, and then we'll have uh, create empty. We'll call this ground check, right? Mm -hmm. And then basically, we're going to copy basically all of this. Um, we're going to do, I'm going to put the script of player move here, player, player movement to test, yes. And then we're going to put ground check. We're going to add the Oh, we didn't put the box collider for this one, did we? No. <laughs> My bad, guys. So we'll put that here. And we'll edit collider. Put it right there. See how close is that? Oh, look at that. It's like almost perfect. Yeah. Um, so, and then we add, of course, the script player movement. No, wait, no, 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 not the player movement. No, 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 we add ground check. Yeah, that's the script we want, not player movement. Um, let's delete both of these. We don't need, we don't need this. Boop, goodbye. Um, okay, oh, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash on me. You cra Oh, I didn't put a rigid body, that's why. Remember guys, physics, physics <laughs> is important. Rigid body, yeah, yeah. always gotta put rigid body. Uh, Wait, did you just delete the other the other player? I did. I, I was just curious, you know. Oh, I thought you were gonna hide it or something. But, um. I don't know if you could hide it, to be honest. Okay. Okay. See, we, we're jumping, right? It works. We're jumping. Now, yeah. Now let me do this, guys. This is some extreme parkour. Oh my god! I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even do it right. Oh, but I can't. I can't jump anymore. That's the point. See, I cannot jump. <laughs> regardless of how much I'm pressing space. So the reason why is that it's there's actual rotation. Does this show the rotation here? 
I it might actually. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Rotation. And now since that rotation occurred, I cannot jump again. So yeah, we have these constraints in rigid body where we can freeze the Z rotation. So now I could jump regardless if I tilt because well he's not gonna rotate anymore. Well except when that happens for some reason. Do I know why? I do not know. Adam, do you think you know? Wait, why it's not I have because this collision. Maybe because I'm putting too much force on it. Maybe what should yeah. happen I think what should happen is in the ground it's oh no, this sprite the box collider, I think it should be a little bit bigger, don't you think? I think I think so. Cause, well, I think what's happening is that it touches it and it tries to apply a force, but it's like, oh, you can't apply a force, but it still tries to anyways. Yeah. Well, that was just like a little weird, weird thing. This is interesting. Hmm. I think, yeah, because remember with the earlier example, when that dude was like flying up there and then he came back down and then he went straight through the collider. I think since I'm trying yeah. to apply so much force to said collider that it's, you know, it's given the, the, the player like, whoa, are you, are you, are you in collision or are you not in collision? We could see here maybe if the is grounded is there. See, it becomes false immediately because it doesn't know. Yep. That's really cool. Anyway, yeah, that's just the technical right. stuff about it anyway. <laughs> um, should we do the sprint, the last thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you jump on rocks now. Now we're going to do something really cool. <laughs> now we're going to do... We're thinking about making it so our, our character or our player can actually like, sprint around. And, uh, maybe Whoa, you do something. I want. That is not what I want. No, I want move. There we go. Yeah, we're going to have that the player go Speedy Gonzalez, basically. <laughs> so we're going to have this here. Move that here. Put move here. There we go. So now we're going to say if you have pressed uh, the shift key, because that's um, pretty common for all, all games that are platform that are on PC, right? That shift key is the you know, the key that you go run faster with. We're going to do um, an if statement. If input dot, and then this is get key, right? Get key? Yeah, I think so. Dot. Left shift. Left shift. This isn't it. It's not get key. It's get Oh, it's get key, and then you open up the parentheses, and then key code dot. Oh, yeah. Because like it, you have key to input the key code, right? Dot. There we go. Left shift. There it is. Yeah, that's right. So input dot get key, and then whatever key it is, you put in the parentheses. That's the parameter, and then that's uh -huh. the key code of left shift. Okay. Okay. And then we put that in the if statement. Then we're gonna say. If you do that, then uh, let's make, let's put this one here. We're going to put, we're going to make a local variable. We'll put it public float. Um, new speed. Uh, we can call this new speed or sprint speed or sprint something. Sprint speed. Let's do sprint speed. I like, I like being specific. It doesn't need to have anything. Uh, then we could do sprint speed. When now equal uh, move speed times two? Uh, yeah. Make it double. Um, and then we'll put sprint speed here. And then if you don't press shift, that's okay. Then you'll just do the original. This. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be errors here. We should be good to go. Uh, all right, let's try it. Let's save it. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We've got a semicolon. Oh, we got semicolon. a semicolon. I did. Where? Oh, I did. Right there. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of Python um coding. That's on me. Okay. No errors. No errors. No errors. 
Let's run. Okay, we could still do all our movements. That's good. Now let's do the the shift run. This is the perspective. Now let's hold shift. What? Oh. There we go. There's Can one we... small problem though. What was the problem? Um, try try this. Like like hop on top of the rock. Um, and then like jump off, but in midair push shift. Yeah, man. It's just, it's, I don't know what you're talking. Like, that's what you do every day in that, real life. I don't know what yeah, you're talking yeah. about. There's no. This so, isn't like defying the laws of physics at all. No, no, no. So there's two options here. Uh, if you're, oh, there, I, at least I, there's two options. There might be more. <laughs> uh, the first option is to make it so that you can only sprint when you're on the ground, right? You can just use use the gravity thing. The oh, second yeah. option right. is just to call this a feature and make it a dash. <laughs> 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 You just make it a da you can dash in midair in the game. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty smart. That's, that's funny. That's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, but just like Adam said, you could just put and and, and, and then you copy the uh, and is grounded and and and, 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 and percent and percent. I think are we saying that right? I have no idea. Chat. Can I said Amsterdam either uh, earlier? I said Amsterdam because I thought no, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and is grounded just like that <laughs> now we run and we can see if we could that or we, not dash sprint i guess uh -huh. jump here still sprint now let's try sprinting nope we cannot we could do a sprinting jump no we cannot <laughs> oh interesting can you jump into a sprint? Can I jump into a sprint? Yes, I can. Ooh. That looks really, really fidgety, but it does work. I think I think implementing it as a dash feature might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there must be more logic here that's saying maybe it's another if statement, like if this is being pressed down, then just keep, then just yeah. allow it to jump. Yeah. Or to jump or sprint. Like, yeah, you can go through and change up some stuff. Yeah. That. that that completely depends on you. Um, as the as the developer. And you know, just for fun, let's put another sprites. How about we I mean this is nothing else that we talk about. Um, so I guess we could call it the end of the stream. I don't know if the, anybody has some questions that we can try and answer. Because yeah. we, we have a Yeah, we are still new to um Unity Unity. ourselves. Um, we'll try to answer the questions as best as we can. Yes. Um, uh, I guess I'll go through do some announcements while we're uh, while ready for any questions to come in. Uh, don't forget tomorrow we will have. Are you making a log? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was like, oh, it's so nice you made a log. And like you're like, oh, for King God. I was like, oh. um. But don't forget tomorrow there's the Python uh, video with uh, the third part to the calculator series. Uh, have job video next Tuesday. Josh and I are also going to start working on a game. Uh, based something on this, we'll have more updates for y'all next week. I think hopefully on Wednesday or something, and we'll be doing a devlog series on the channel, so y'all can look forward to that. For sure. Uh, is there anything else we should let the people know about? I don't believe so. That is the scale. That's not what we want. Someone says, "Isn't Unity traditionally used with C sharp?" Yes, it is. We are we are coding in C sharp, right? Yep. Yes, we're recording. In. Yes. Oh. Uh, also, apparently, uh, you can also code in Boo. Uh, but no one does what? that. Uh, what? Boo. Like, yes. Like. Boo. <laughs> Like B O O. Like, like, like I'm gonna scare you, boo. Yes. Boo. Like, boo. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just funny. Boo. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just kind of fascinated with my little obstacle course I have here. <laughs> Round. All right. See, as you can see, it's very easy to add new things in because you can just uh, you can just assign the ground thing to them. Oh. <coughs> 
Did you forget to put the gun on that one? I put, coll I forgot to put colliders in the one. Oh my. Uh, I know, I just like how you said the moment you said that. <laughs> the player I was didn't like, go. This is so easy. <laughs> that, that was funny. That was funny. We gotta add our box collider to these in there. <laughs> that, that, you gotta admit, that was kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do this again. <laughs> let's do this again. There we go. We oh no! Stop hitting on our game, TT. It's perfectly fine. It's Listen. amazing. Our game is amazing. Uh, I can't jump anymore. No, yeah, yes, I can. I was lying. Uh, there's an interesting bug where if you like stay if you stay in the slanted log, like stay on the slope slope part. Okay, now try to stay on the slope part. Like try not to yeah fall off. I can't it, get up. It, adds, it like adds more and more ah! momentum on there. Yeah. For some reason. I believe it's because um. I believe it's just the physics of it. <gasps> oh no! He's trapped no! now. No! I died. Oh well. Long. Well. Rest in peace to our fallen comrade. Yeah. But uh, uh, if there's no more um, questions, is there any questions? Actually, I, I, don't, I don't know. think so. Okay, then I guess we can end it here. Yes, thank you all very much for coming. If you haven't already, go ahead and download Unity. It's free to uh, for if you list, unless you make the crap ton of money. Uh, but it's it's pretty much free. Um, so go ahead and build your own little runner game, and I will see y'all later. I think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you guys oh, yeah, like, like uh, the content fine. that you guys are seeing. Uh, Let us know also, them. hold on, sorry. Let us know if you guys want, like, you know, tutorials, like, on specific things in Unity. We'll try our best to come up with these tutorials, but... Um, I love how you specified in Unity, just in case I was like, we want Scratch! Precisely why I said in Unity. <laughs> 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 um, but, no, for, for real, though, if you guys really want um, Scratch... Uh, if you guys really want Scratch to be a part of, like, a, I don't know, episodes or, or a stream, then we might as well do it. Uh-huh. Um, Let us know. If, if we get enough comments on our videos, you know, enough viewer mm -hmm. engagement, uh, we will happily consider We will definitely it. do uh, Scratch um, videos. But until but then, we'll you got, you got, you got projects, other stuff. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. So you want to call it a day? Yep. Uh, All right. On the stream in five, four. Goodbye, three, everybody. Two, one. Oh yes, I'm sure. <laughs> okay.